sandals on the way I'm sliding up I won't join no gang cause I speak truth and I ain't slime enough I can't kill my brothers, we the same, it's just not adding up Esau he a killer, Gino side he keeps attracting us Most I say be fruitful, multiply so we be adding up Compare his seed to the sand of the sea, we deep so you can't add us up My people they got hair inside they heart, they wanna paint us up Grew up in the red zone, blood tears, I see red flags on us This world be killing me, with lies the way they capping on me Like these publicans, they coons and seeing the way they taxing on me Prove what you say, the evidence, show me the facts, little homie Don't hold your tongue, just bring it out, what's on your mind, little brody? Riding on 4 Giados, bougie, how we sit, Moscato huh. Feast days of the Lord, champagne be rainy, poncho huh. Salvation of the Lord's people, come on, we need that pronto huh. Wisdom, yes, it bring riches, like we just won the lotto Keep huh. these commandments in the faith, my brother, that's the motto huh. Most how humble you quick, boy, if you think you macho It's real, we poor, but we rich in spirit All praises, all praises You just read? You just read? Okay, you can Guys, have a blessed day. As a matter of fact, yeah, you read already? You read? Thank you. Alright, Shashar, you can read? Yeah, you can. Get a new reader, get a new reader. All praise. Clap it up for the most high. Clap it up for Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shah. The Lord gave us yet another mighty Shabbat, a mighty seventh day, to honor and keep the most high's commandments and to repent. And that's why we out here. We out here to wake up the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. And what's going on, brother, crossing the street? You talk to me real quick. Let me get your opinion on something. How about you, brother? Can I get your opinion on something real quick? Let me get your opinion on something real quick. This picture right here. Let me check this out. Check this out. Try to get your opinion on something, elder. Sisters, sisters. On this picture. We try to get your opinion real quick. Right, all praise to the most up. Right, so we calling out to the sheep, man. Give me um Romans chapter 10. Give me Romans chapter 10. I want like the last couple of verses. What's going on, sis? Can I get your opinion on something real quick? Alright. Romans chapter 10 and you can start at verse 20. Bring it up. It's the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 20. But Esaias is very bold and saying, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But it, but to Israel, he said, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands. The Lord said, all the day long, I stretch forth my hands. Unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. To a disobedient and gainsaying people. This is a thankless job. We sound like a broken record. Over and over and over again. It's the same tune, the same story. We come out, we shake the hand, we stretch forth our hand, the people ignore us, the people walk past. That happens every single time we out here. But guess what? We know it's a reward waiting for us in heaven. So we keep pushing forward. We keep putting in th this thing in brick by brick. Look at these buildings around us. Do you think it was easy to make those buildings? You had people had to get on cranes and it was 50 feet in the air. People kind of measuring the thing the right way, putting that building together. It's not easy putting the building together. But here it is. We out here putting this building together for the Most High God. And we're going to continue to do that. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 3. See what I want. I believe verse 9 is what I want. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Yeah, you can start at uh, verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. You know, oh. For we are laborers. For we are what? For we are laborers. We are laborers. That means we workers. Can you read it? Together with God. With laborers together with the Most High. Can you read it? Ye are God's husbandry. What the Lord say? Ye are God's husbandry. He said, you are God's husbandry. Look up husbandry. Look up husbandry. What's going on, family? Real quick, can I get your opinion on something real quick, big bro? This picture right here. Take a look at this quick, picture real quick, quick, bro. Quick, quick. Real quick, real quick. Can I get your opinion on that? What you think about that picture right there? Look like a cracker to me. Look like a cracker to you. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. So, so real quick, real quick. What 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 do Christ look like then? I'm on a date. I'm, he looked like us. He looked like us, but he was a Jew, right? Right. So that means we the Jews, right? Exactly. All praise. We the Israelites. We the Jews, brother. All praise to the Most High. All right, bring it up. This is the definition of husbandry. You know? The care. Cultivation and breeding of crops and animals. So that's what husbandry is. It's basically farm work. Now, why is the Lord saying we're his husbandry? Get 
Give me Genesis. I believe I want like the 41st chapter. I'm going to have to kind of dive into this and see exactly where it is. Going into where Pharaoh, it's that verse where Pharaoh was pretty much saying the Jews are despicable because they, they husbandmen, pretty much. They herdsmen. I believe it's in the 41st chapter where they got the land of Goshen. I need to find that verse. It's in 41, I believe. Or it might be earlier. You know, yeah, it's, early, it's later. Yep, it's in 43. Let's try 43. It's whenever they got the land of Goshen. Okay, Pharaoh is pleased. Jacob's journey to Israel. Okay, it's like chapter 47. Chapter 47. And you can get verse... You know what? Yeah, it's 46 and 34. Yeah, let's get that. And it reads, That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from, from our youth even until now. That's how the Israelites move. And parables and similitudes have to relate to the audience. This is why you're always talking about the sickle, the, the root, the, the ripe harvest. Because our people were husbandmen. So the Lord said we are his husband tree because they understood the work that went to cultivating crops and animals. That's why the Lord used that word, those words specifically. Can you read it? Both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. The Egyptians were so simple, they thought shepherds was an abomination. They thought shepherds was low level of work. What's going on, big bro? Can I, can I get your opinion on something real quick? The sign right here. Check this out real quick. Get your opinion on it real fast. Hold that sign up, big bro. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Check this out. I know you're busy. That's that's why it's gonna be real quick. Check this out. What you think about this right here? You said he don't exist. Is this historically? Christ, do you believe in the Bible at all? Yeah, it is right. Version. What's, what version of the Bible is that? It's, it's a version that predates the uh, other ones that existed, like King James and all the other ones, New International. You ever heard of the Septuagint? Yeah, definitely. definitely. The Septuagint, that's like the Old Testament in Greek. Yeah, that's then you got like the Latin Vulgate. Yeah. That's when all the books was together. Yeah. Then you got other versions like the Geneva and things like that. But I never heard of the version you're, you're talking yeah, about. It's, 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 I just what was it called? How you spell it? Sinai version. Sinai? But I heard the Septuagint. It's, uh, it's probably parallel to that. Uh, are you what? referring to the Codex Sinaiticus? No. no. Yeah, that's that's history we never heard before, brother. But nonetheless, Christ is, is an actual uh, figure. He's an actual person that walked the earth. But is he a consciousness for you to elevate and deliver yourself out of what you are in your state of mind first? You wait for the flesh to come out and rapture yourself to, to what? To a level that you can't even perceive. Well, real, real That's quick. That's why it's a conscious. Well, real quick, you just, not, not you just, conscious. you just kind of jumped to conclusion. You just said what we, what we doing. Yeah, what I'm just saying is That's not necessarily what we're doing. I get what you're saying. In other words, you're saying Christ is a symbol for freeing your mind. Is that what you're pretty much saying? It's, 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 it's free your mind because your mind, your body follows. Now, can you be two things? That can, can his existence be real and also what you said be true at the same time? But. The consciousness of his existence was before his existence based on flesh, based on his Mary, his mother, right? Because the consciousness of him traveling, like he said, people saw him in Asia, people saw him in uh, Egypt, you know what I'm saying? So the consciousness of that... Well, just Christ didn't start. travel to, uh, well, what did he to do? Asia Minor. What did he do between the ages of 12 and when he was according to their scripture or whatever? Give me, give me John chapter 1. What did he do at 18? 16, 14. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you something real quick. Get John chapter 1. We're going to show you exactly what he... No, this is first John. We had John the first... Uh, John. The actual book of John. John the first chapter. 
show you what he was on the earth doing. John chapter 1. And we want to start at... I want to show where it said the world of Israel. Uh, yeah, 29. We're going to keep reading. It's a, version, it's a version, better version of King James Version. Real quick, the, do you know where the, like, do you know the history but, but behind the King James Version of the Bible? Yeah, I know who he, who he is and what he Okay, so how did the King James Version come to fruition? He, had, he hired 12 scrolls. You know the first book he ever had in before that, well, I'm, I'm talking about the, the talking Bible about, specifically. Okay, we, just, we, we talk about a person that was a king or king. Well, I'm talking about the Bible specifically. Because you about to talk about the demonology book. When you actually read it, that book he was saying to hell with demons. You can just Wikipedia search that. But nonetheless, how did the Bible, the King James Version, how did it come to fruition? From 12 scribes that he chose, and none of them even, even studied even the Aramaic language. What year? What year? That's my spot. Well, I mean, okay, let's show you something. Get, get, you ain't gonna find go to it King James ain't no Bible dates, right here. Ain't no correct dates in that book. Wait, we about to get a history book. You believe in history? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we about to show you something. Get Bible and then go to King James Version. Because what you just said, quite honestly, it was, it was false. There wasn't 12 scribes hired by King James. That's not how the King James Version came to fruition. You, have you ever heard of the William Tyndale Bible? So the William Tyndale Bible came out years before King James, and that's where he got over 80 to 90 percent of his work from. Because other transliterations of the Bible exist, but there's not one better version. There's not another better a, a version better than another that all actually say the same thing. We can pull out a William Tyndale and it says the same thing. This is actually the most accurate illiter uh, transliteration of all time. But check this out real quick. You found it? Check this out though real quick. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, King James Version. When Elizabeth died in 1603, the crown passed to James I, who had been King of Scotland for 37 years, as James the Sixth. Forty-seven. What did it say? Forty-seven. It was forty-seven of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars. Hold on, real quick. It said forty-seven of the best Hebrew and Greeks. Cause hold on. If I'm a king, what do kings have access to? Resources. So he didn't just hire 12 random men. He had 47 of the best top men that knew Greek and Hebrew transliterate the scriptures. Keep reading. We, we, don't keep, we don't keep reading. It says he, he had 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day were divided into six groups. So they divided them into six groups. Three for the Old Testament. Three for the Old Testament. Two for the New Testament. And one for the Apocrypha. Apocrypha is the, is, this is Greek for the hidden or uh, uh, lost books. Because in the 1611 King James Version, that's where it actually got authorized. They worked on it from 1608 to 1611. Check it out. The Apocrypha is included in it. So, they took this out in the 18 or the uh, 16 where the 1800s, the Apocrypha. Some Catholic churches still actually deal with the, the Apocrypha, certain books in the Apocrypha. But it's originally 80 books versus 66. And we have them all right here. So we're going to keep reading. It says two of the groups. Hold on, real quick. Somebody passed them out with the loud music. Okay, let's read that. Two of the groups met at Oxford. Two at Cambridge and two at Westminster. Westminster, Oxford, Cambridge. These are top, top colleges. So you had the best scholars going to the top colleges, poking at the different teams, working on the transliteration. And mind you, it was already English versions. But he had to get in there so tough that he had the best scholars do the work. So, you won't believe so look up the William Tyndale. No, what I'm saying. You look up William you Tyndale. You believe that, right? If you Hebrews, you should even validate anything that's anything close to Coptic Ethiopian transcripts. You start from there. If you're going to wingle back to some Greeks who were literally illiterate and they end up with Hyksos that traveled over to Europe, and you're going to believe that. What, what Greeks are you talking about? I'm talking about the Greeks you keep giving. You know, they don't even have a language. Greek is not even language. You're supposed to find some Greek. What are you talking about Greek but for? But you had Greek translation in terms of a king. Homosexual ruler that ruled over To be honest, you, you're spilling uh, out a lot of stuff that uh, sounds good, but it's not ruler. historically uh, accurate. Well, how not? 
love history. You just said King James had 12 scholars. He got 47. Listen, I want to listen. I want to listen to some Hebrew doctrine. The ones that that wasn't co you, I got corrupted. You want to hear some Hebrew? I, I got no. I, I got you some Hebrew. I want to hear the Coptic truth yeah. about how that I, was. I, 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 got, I got you. I got the give, Christianity. Give I got the Islam. Well, real, quick. Go real quick. Real quick. I gotta go. Real quick. We never said we was Christian though. Look, I said, what you using to have a Christian translation? It's not the, a Christian translation. Okay, then what you doing listening to? I got some what, what, when you well, hold on. It, it's, what is the Bible? Okay, what does Bible mean? It's called Little Book, and they translated it. It's, what what it's does the other, word Bible mean? Okay, the what? Little Book, because it's other. That, that's not what Bible means. Well, what, okay, what does it mean? Okay. Let's look up Bible. Translation. In the in the in the etymology. Let's look up the etymology of the word Bible. Yep. Just look up Bible and type etymology. You gotta go there with me, man. I'm talking about studying real no, we, 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 Hebrew translations. We have to go Study there because the you don't, you have to know what Bible means to dive deeper into this. So don't, just give me one second. Don't the etymology of words and content of Hebrew and then start from there. Don't go with the with your brother. We understand and know Hebrew. But, but you gotta. Hey, you wouldn't be doing that. Hey, hey, King, you wouldn't what, be using King, that. King, what's your name? Rakim, man. Rakim. So Rakim, follow me real quick. Bars, I gotta go, man. Real quick. Real quick, I'm beyond the translations of the Bible, bro. You gotta get with the Hebrew. Rakim, Barashayat, Barashayat, Alahayu, Atta, Hashemayu, Wa'at, Awa'at. Wait, Rakim, what I just said? If you was a Muslim and I asked you. Wait, Rakim, what I just said? Listen, listen, if I get you an Arabic translation, right? Let's show you. And then I convert it over into etymology. Alright, let's show you, big bro. You wouldn't be calling me. I wouldn't, what's your real name with English name? Brother, I just spoke Hebrew to you. Did you hear what I said? You gotta tell me etymology of what you said. Real quick, check this out. I will tell you right now. I will, what, Check this out, brother. Hey, we got the Hebrew right here. Right. Right, this Genesis 4 and 1 in the Hebrew. So the brother was just spewing a, a pseudo knowledge. That wasn't true doctrine he was spewing. And that's what people do in the world. They say a lot of so called big words and things that sound fancy, but to somebody that's learned, it sounds foolish. Well, King James, he had 12 scholars that he hand picked, and they didn't even know nothing. That sounds. Wise to somebody who don't actually study. What's going on with y'all family? Real quick, y'all can we get y'all pin on some? A Bible verse? One Bible verse, real quick. We want y'all pin on it. Alright. What you want to say? A lot of people want to make points about us being Hebrew Israelites and not knowing Hebrew. I just said the first verse in the Bible in Hebrew. That brother did not know that. It's the very first verse in the Bible. That's all I said was Genesis 1 and 1. Then just ignore it. He, he wasn't trying to deal with that at all, so we know how that goes. But for edification's sake, pull up Bible in the etymology. Bible in the etymology. Brother didn't want to deal with this. I wonder where it says, uh, it says the holy books. So this is Bible from etymologue.com. From, from the phrase Biblia Sacra, holy books, a translation of Greek, to Biblia, to Hagia, the holy books. The holy books with an S. So a Bible is a collection of different books. People get it confused and think it's one author. And they think the author is King James. King James authorized the transliteration of the Bible in 1608. That's all that happened. A transliteration isn't a rewriting, it's just right, it's just translating from one language to another. This actually mentioned the 12 minute you just referred to. It says when a group had completed its task, its work was submitted to 12 men, two from each panel. Final differences of opinion were settled at a general meeting of each company. In cases of special difficulty, learned men outside of the Board of Revisors were consulted. Marginal notes were used only to explain Hebrew and Greek words to draw attention to parallel passages. So that's pretty plain upon tables. That's plain. So you have 12 men on top of the 47 men and other men outside of that looked over the word. They made sure this, this was so accurate. So you can't just say, well, that was rewritten and to be honest, I don't know what he said. He honestly said a bunch of nothing. If we're being honest, do anybody remember what he said? Like, to be honest, I don't know what angle he was coming from. He just threw out a lot of false information. He was a consciousness. 
then he went on to the translations in the Hebrew and the Greek and said it had to be a Christian translation. How can a religion translate the Bible? So it was just a lot of this, and that's what happens when you just study these different things and you're not rooted in any true understanding or doctrine. That'll happen to you. So, you know, God bless the brother, Lord willing, he can repent, humble down, and we can talk to the brother again. He can actually get some true understanding, some true wisdom. Look up William Tyndale. T-Y-N-D-A-L-E. William Tyndale. So the brother was, what's going on with your, what's your race? Are you mixed or Hispanic? Mixed, what's your father? Come here, come here real quick. We're trying to get your opinion on something. What's going on with your family? I think that's it. Oh yeah, the William Tyndale. Oh. That brother got that thing. Pull up the William Tyndale. He's gonna pull out the uh, flip phone. <laughs> oh, wow. Took me back to the 2000 and <laughs> They still making them? They got the internet too? <laughs> oh, it's actually older? Wow. How you going down? It's touch screen? Oh, it's still touch screen though. Now this is a new version of it. It ain't old. Oh, God. I want to click on <laughs> click on Wikipedia. Brother, in this thing. So the William Tyndale going into King James. So right here it says what estimate suggests what estimate suggests that the New Testament in the King James Version is 83% of Tyndale's work. In the first half of the Old Testament, 76%. And when you look into the William, look up William Tyndale uh, Bible, the version of the Bible. It's, it, it probably is in there. It's probably got some heat in there. You can find it in there. But look up William Tyndale Bible. So King James got well over half of the work from there. It should be in Wikipedia too. It's, it's not popping up. Oh, here it is, Tyndale Bible. That brother pulled out there. It's mighty. There's an excerpt here Real quick, I just want to read this. The Tyndale Bible, it says, it says, Tyndale's biblical text is credited with being the first Anglophone biblical translation to work directly from Hebrew and Greek texts although it heavily relied upon the Latin Septuagint. So that's playing upon tables. So it's the first one that had heavily laid, or that got its work from the original. What's going on, sisters? Can we get y'all pin on something real quick? Real quick, real quick. Yeah, y'all sisters, we trying to get y'all pin on something. Real quick. We trying to get y'all pin on something. No, we not, we not taking no pictures or nothing. Y'all ain't got to be on camera. We just want y'all pin on something. Can you hold that up for me, Baba Kishan? Yeah, hold this up for me. Yeah, we, we ain't gonna fight y'all. We out here for y'all, sisters. We just want we just trying to get people opinion on, on something. Check this picture out real real, real, real quick. What's your religious background? Oh, I love the Lord. You love the Lord? Christians. Y'all all Christians? Yes. Y'all was raised Christians? Yes. Okay, when last time y'all been to church? Last Sunday. Last Sunday. What y'all learned? I learned. Right. I learned I'm talking about like in church. Like what was the sermon? What was he going over? The sermon was about navigating through today's world. Okay. Like we yeah. have. So treating everybody right in a world that's chaotic and crazy. Okay. And making sure that uh, we're loving our brother, making sure that we're doing the things that we're supposed to do for our purpose. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. So y'all was learning about y'all purpose and basically taking accounts of Christ and how he walked on the earth and relating them to today and how you can move in this time. Okay, that's cool. Y'all got a favorite book of the Bible? Y'all be reading the Bible? Like every day, every so often. How often y'all read it? I read every day. You read every day. What's your favorite book? Proverbs. Proverbs is your favorite book? Proverbs. That's all y'all favorite book? Proverbs. Okay, okay. Proverbs is a mighty book. So so y'all believe in the entire Bible? Like everything in the Bible? I believe in God. You believe in God? My emotions, uh, 
it's not about my emotions in this space, but okay. emotionally there are things that I may disagree with or may turn an eye to and then I ask God for the clarity and he gets it. Okay. I'm gonna read something in Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter thirty and verse eight. Proverbs thirty and five. Proverbs thirty verse five. Look it up. Every word of God, every word of God is pure. Read that again. Every word of God is pure. So he said, every word of God is pure. So every single thing in this Bible is pure understanding. Would you agree with that? So even if something me or you can read and hear, and we may disagree with it, or our conscience is saying, ah, I don't really like that. To be honest, that doesn't really matter because God told us in Isaiah that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's not a mortal man. And that's why I always laugh when people say the Bible is man-made, but everything the Bible talk about, man despises. Man doesn't like the things written in the Bible. So how can man make the Bible when it goes against everything man wants to do? So some of the things you're reading in the Bible, what that is doing when you say you emotionally don't you know, connect with it or like it, it's because it's probably cutting you. It's probably like, dang. I'm, you know, messing up in this aspect. Well, no, not for me in that aspect. So how would you, how would I you say it? What I, what I think in reference to that is, um, because of the world that we live in, it's hard to live like Jesus, and it's hard to live the words in the Bible. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's not right, because we do know that God's thoughts are above ours. Right. But it becomes a difficult thing. So for me, it's not necessarily me being cut. But, so I can tell you specifically, it was about um, being submissive to a man. Okay. That was something that was a big thing in my sisterhood circle. But it's because it's not easy to be submissive in this world of men. Okay. So. But we have, we got about five minutes. So we, got we got about five minutes. Well, I just want to get something real quick for you then. Have you, do you believe in the Old Testament? I get Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. I wanted to touch on something else, but they only got five minutes, so we go dive right into it. Get 29 and 1 first, just for the context sake. Book of Deuteronomy to the 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant, which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. So a covenant is a contract, like an agreement. Like you got a covenant with, like what's your phone company? Like who do you phone with? Like Verizon. You have a covenant with them that if I pay the bill, my service stays on. If I don't, they cut it off. The Israelites, God's chosen people, had the same thing with the Lord. They had an agreement or a covenant with God. Remember, they got freed out of Egypt, parted the Red Sea. This is after that, Deuteronomy. And the Lord made a covenant with them, just so you follow. Them. So go to verse 28 and 15, just for the context. So let's bring this up. 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass. It shall happen in the future. This is Moses talking to the Israelites in the wilderness. Read. Really? If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Don't hearken, meaning to hear the Lord's of the, the, the words of the Lord. To hearken, to observe, like to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Lord said curses are going to come upon the Israelites for breaking the commandments. That's what God said. Now take a look at this sign. It might be hard to look at. But are these blessings or curses? Getting your backs beat in, getting your babies fed to alligators, slavery on ships. Is that a curse? Or would y'all say this is looks like a cursed people? Now did this happen to anybody else on the same scale? Was 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 Arabs getting lynched and burnt alive? Was they was was Chinese people getting skinned and they 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 shoes made to alligator? No, that never happened, right? So when the Lord is saying a curse will happen upon his chosen people, that chosen people, just to jump the gun, would be us. And we can prove it by reading the curses. The main curse is verse 68. Like, how did our forefathers come to America? Okay, the time is running out, baby. What's the what up? That's why I'm asking, how did our forefathers come to America? Are you familiar with slavery on ships? Absolutely. Like, check this out. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. What was the Hebrews doing in Egypt? I love this. I love it. The there were slaves in Egypt, right, sister? I just gotta make sure you're there. Real quick, this 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 last one. We really got reservations. Y'all got reservations? The Lord said the Israelites would go to slavery, read. Again with ships. Ships. The Lord said the Israelites would go to slavery on ships, read. By the way, whereof I speak unto thee, 
Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemy. The Lord said we would go to slavery on ships and get sold, sister. So that would be our people in the Bible. So that would be our people in the Bible. So the sister had, re you know, re reservations. We got to kind of speed speed into this. I don't think the brothers gave her a flyer. Somebody want to chase them down through the spirit. All praises. What's going on, family? Come talk to us real quick. Get your opinion on something, bro. In a red hat. What's going on, big bro? Okay, so that's why we out here, man. Yet again, to plant these seeds. That's all we can do. You know, everything is is of the Lord's will at the end of the day. So we can't marvel at people having reservations and the conversation going how it goes. Lord willing, she can have enough. Lord willing, it can be a seed planted good enough to where it can get watered later. But again, like I was saying earlier, we building this house for the Most High God. We going into that husbandry, going into that farming. That's why, give me that, what's that, second address about the grapes, or the cluster. I believe that's the ninth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Second address, the ninth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. What's going on, big bro? Get your opinion on something real quick. Hey, check this out. It's the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 21. And I saw and spirited greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster. Grape of the cluster. Here we go with that husbandry talk. That talk of dealing with herbs and fruit and planting. Because it's actual commandments to where you can't leave the, the gleaning of the grapes or anything that you grow. Can you read it? And a plant of a great people. And a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then. Which was born in vain. The Lord said, I, I got me a, a cluster that I'm keeping. But let everybody else perish that was born in vain. That's what the Lord said. What's going on, brother? What's going on? Come talk to us, big bro. You already did. Hey, big bro, you be, you be at LA Fitness? Oh, yeah, I be seeing you in there, man. You be getting it in, man. Keep thriving, man. Y'all praise to the most, sir. So, yeah, kind of keep reading. It reads, and let my grape be kept and my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. The Lord said, with great labor have I made that plant perfect. That husbandry. So with great labor, we're trying to make that farm perfect. So when that, that harvest comes and Christ comes back with that sickle, that we can be a part of that good number. That's why you do the wheat and the tares. All these different parables going into farming in the Bible. Even our feast days go into farming. Right, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, all these different feast days, going into planting and dealing with agriculture. Brothers really don't know it, but that seventh moon that you blow the trumpet on, that's the harvest moon. That's why during the Feast of Tabernacles, that's the end gathering. That's that harvest moon. You guys should look that up. That, that full moon that comes in that seventh month is actually a harvest moon. What's going on, sister? Hey, how you doing, sister? Come talk to us real quick, sister. We trying to get your opinion on something. You, what's your religious background? Christian. You Christian? How long have you been Christian? For a long time. For a long time? Like your whole life? or yeah, my yeah, life. Your whole life. Okay, that's beautiful. When, when the last time you've been to church? Last Sunday. Last Sunday? You go every Sunday? Yes. All right, okay, okay. What, 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 you, what you learned in there when you went? You read the Bible? Yes. What's the What's the last book you read? Um, I just went back to Genesis. Okay. Okay. You went back to Genesis. Yes. Um, I was just sporadically in the um, Bible, but I was in Genesis this morning. So. Okay. Okay. How far are you get in Genesis? Have you read like the whole book? You just yeah, just started. I've read, like, uh, all the Genesis. I read some of Exodus. Um, some of Leviticus. Okay, sister in the law. Clap it up for the sister. Sister getting in the law. All right, real quick though, sister. Real quick, sister. Can I show you something real quick though? Something real quick. Check this. Check this sign out right here. Okay. This sign right here. What's your opinion on that one though? That sign right there. I think it's too much. <laughs> Why you say it's too much? Because that's God. You say that's God. Yeah. So you see that big picture with the horns, right? Yeah. Now look at that picture next to it. The, the other guy. Is that God too? I, I can't. I don't know. Well, that man right there is an actual man. His name is Cesare Borgir. Okay, I don't want to 
You don't want to hear that, sister? You don't want to hear the truth? Real quick, so you say you don't want to hear that that's that's not Christ, sister. Wow. Sister kind of ran off of that. Wow. No, that's not that's not that's not God, sister. God don't look like that. Dang, that's crazy. She wanted to stay. Give me give me Isaiah chapter. Give me Isaiah 47 and verse 9. That was I mean, she said, I can't hear it. She just shut her ears literally and ran off. I can't hear that my Christ ain't white. He got to be a white man. Ain't that right, Esau? Christ is a black man. Did you know that? You know Christ is a black man? All right, he coming to enslave all white people? Y'all ever heard that before? All right, bring it up. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 9. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment. 47 and 9. It's like 47 and verse number 7. Start there. Real quick, what's going on, family? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? Can we get y'all opinion on something real quick? I'll pray some most out. Bring this up. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 7. And thou says, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay thee. Like verse 6, verse 6. My bad. What's going on, family? What, what's your... Bring it up. Verse number 6. I was wroth with my people. The Lord said, I was pissed off. I was wroth with Israel. Furious. Right. I have polluted mine inheritance. I polluted mine inheritance. I got those rat bastards in the land. I got those aliens in your land. I polluted mine inheritance. What's going on with y'all? What's going on, family? You can talk to us real quick. Get your opinion on something. Bring it out. So the Lord said, I polluted mine inheritance. The inheritance is Israel. He polluted the land, Rick. And it reads, and given them into thine hand. He said, I given them into thine hand. When you read from the top of the chapter, it's talking about the daughter of Babylon. The Lord said, I polluted mine inheritance and gave you to the, the to, and gave my people into their hand. I put my people into your hands. Real quick, get Job 11 and 16. Or it's 16 and 11. Get Job 16 and 11. You can hold that through the spirit. The Lord said, I polluted mine inheritance, gave them into your hand. Bring it up. Job chapter 16, verse 11. God had delivered me to the ungodly. He said, God delivered me to the ungodly. What does it mean to deliver something? Don't Amazon deliver that package? They deliver that package because it's for you. So the Lord delivered us to the ungodly men of the earth. He gave us to them. Just like he said right there. He, he did that to us for our sins and iniquity. Read. Right? And turned me over into the hands of the wicked. He said, he turned me over into their hands. Read. I was at ease. I was what? I was at ease. I was at ease. I was in the land of Judea. Well, actually, at the time that Esau took us, I was in the land of West Africa, Negro land, ruling as kings in Europe, as the Moors. I was at ease. Read. But he had broken me. But he had what? But he had broken me. He broken me. When you look at these signs, when you look at the, the, the atrocities done to our people, we broke him, huh? We destroyed as a nation. Read. Asunder. He have also taken me by my neck and shake and shaken me in pieces and set me up for his mark. Set me up for his mark. Kind of praying in Jay. So the Lord said he put he brought us by the neck. So the Lord took us into captivity via these heathen. He put us in their hands due to our disobedience. Bring out what's going on, sisters? What's going on with y'all sisters? Can we talk to y'all real quick? Can we get five minutes of y'all time? All right, bring it up. It's like, what's going on, sister? Can we get five minutes of your time? You believe in the Bible? Yeah, I do. You believe in the Bible? Yes, I do. I believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Rakaim, Rakaim, Rakaim. All right, y'all praise. Bring it up. Christ. Read it on. I believe in Jesus. Thou didst shew them no mercy. Jesus. Upon the ancient has thou very heavily laid thy yoke. The Lord said he laid the Lord Hammer. The Lord said the Lord said upon the, <laughs> the all right, sister, all praise, all praise, all praise. Rakayan, Rakayan, Rakayan. So the Lord straight told us read read that again from from the pollute. Yeah, read it from the top. I was wrong with my people. I was pissed off, right? I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. He gave us to the hand of Babylon. 
Thou didst show them no mercy. He didn't show us no mercy. Check this. Look at this. All right, this is an Edomite with over ten heads. Ten brothers and sisters and maybe children's heads. As a souvenir. Imagine you sit down and it's a bunch of head, cut off several heads behind you. That's demonic. But that's the spirit of Esau. Can you read it? And it reads, Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. Upon the yoke. You can see the yokes of iron on the photo. The Lord said he laid that yoke on our, on our ancients. Can you read it? God, verse number seven. It says, And thou says, I shall be a lady forever. And American Sam will be a lady forever. What's the Statue of Liberty? They call it Lady Liberty. That's one of the titles. One of the surnames of that, of that statue and that idol is Lady Liberty. That's what America says. I shall be a lady forever. Keep reading. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. So now you don't lay these things to your heart. This is going into the mental bondage of, of our people. Like that sister. We say, well, hold on, sister. That's not God. You see the man right next to him? That's a man named Cesar Borgia or Cesare Borgia. What you say, Cesare Borgia? What's his name? Cesare Borgia. Cesare Borgia, right in the, in the, in the, in the Sp Spanish. His actual native tongue. Cesare Borgia, this man is actually a man. And notice the resemblance. That's because they painted that image. It's a false image. It's not real. That's a man. You see that? That's a man right there. Caesar Borgia. Cesare Bois. Okay? So, and then the sister just fled. That's because America is that lady. Their beautiful freedom. In the land of the, the free, home of the braves. Freedom of speech. Freedom, freedom, democracy. Make America great again. They're a lady. So you don't lay those things in your mind. We asked Jake, are you a slave? I ain't a slave. I got a mortgage in the car that I pay a car note on with white man face on I got to work for it. Well, hold on. You're, you're actually a slave. What's a slave? You labor without pay. That's what you're doing. Because what is money? What is it? It's fake. It doesn't exist. It's a piece of paper. They say it got value. So you work hard for that fake piece of paper to give back to them for food. You essentially working for free. It's the same thing. It literally doesn't exist. Money is a is a false construct. Let's go on Caesar Borgia. Get uh, Wisdom of Solomon. You can get it. Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. What's going on, sister in the pink? What's going on, sister in the pink? All y'all sisters. Y'all y'all got two minutes for the words of the Lord? Two minutes for the words of the for the words of the Lord? What's going on, sisters? We all here for y'all. I said, what's, what's, what's your religious background? Y'all out? Are y'all Israelites? Y'all God's chosen people. See that? 14, let's, let's get, you know what, 13. I want I want 13 through the spirit. This whole thing is, or no, I do want 14. You know what, 15. Let's get 15, and we can get verse... You can start at 15. You can start at 15. 15 to 15. Bring it up. Wisdom of Solomon 15 and verse 15. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. All right, so the, the idols of the heathens are counted gods to these people. The sister counted Caesar Borgia as a god. She said, that's doing too much. Wait, why that's too much, sister? That's God. The fact that our people actually believe Esau is God is that's that confounds me every time it's, it makes me sick to my stomach it pisses me off man oh. all right bring it up and it reads which neither have the use of eyes to see nor noses to draw breath right, they just had the young man stump on him and guess what he didn't do nothing so you mean to tell me god lowercase g did nothing about his face getting stepped on that's because it's an idol. It's just an image. It's a picture. Let, let one of us have stepped on that image in the presence of that sister. She might have had a heart attack. She might start flipping over our signs and say, that's my God. Took the poster with her and kind of walked off with it. Who knows what would have happened? She would have probably tried to fight us. Let's just kill us for that image. Because that's her God. 
That's the same type of spirit. When you show them that imagery, they'll say, well, the Lord told us to forgive. We got to let it go. That was years ago. The same type of person, but that's doing too much. Dang, that's true. We always show that to our people, and they say that was years ago. But well, they still hanging Negroes. They still hanging Negroes in 2024. Bring it up. Look that up. Look up how many black lynchings are there so far in 2024. Let's see if, 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 if the statistics come out. Bring it up. It says, nor noses to draw breath, nor ears to hear it, nor fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. They are slow to go. So he was getting, they, so Solomon was getting on them. He said, they slow to go. They can't move. They can't do anything. What's going on, family? Can we get y'all a pen or something? Can we get y'all a pen re real quick on the scripture, a Bible verse? Okay, bring it up. Verse 16, for man made them, and he that borrowed his own spirit fashioned them. He that borrowed his, he said, you borrowing your spirit. He said, hey, you just borrowing your spirit, and you made that. Your own spirit isn't even you. You didn't create yourself, and here you are trying to make a God. That's crazy. Bring it up. But no man can make a God like unto himself. No man has ever created a God. That's actually a God that actually can breathe, think, move, talk, walk. It's just a statue or a picture or an image. What you got? What years you got on here? What year go up to? No, they, 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 that's folly. See, that's statistic they hide. But you can actually look up black guy gets lynched or black woman gets lynched and something might pop up in this thing because it actually happens i know brother seen them stories where they could get lynched one of the most recent recent ones i can take of there was there was a brother that got lynched a couple minutes away from an hbcu and i want to say georgia once say in georgia he got lynched like right above a highway a hunger just left him up there for hours and they said he, even when his body was discovered he was up there for hours after it being reported to, to the police they just left him there so I have that that happened near an hbcu so even when you go to a historically black college your ass still got a chance of being lynched check that out the irony check this out the brother found some kind of article so you can bring that out where's his article what was his written in 2020 check this out by uh and the gov Soraka, there has been more than 6,400 6, lynchings since the end of Civil War, a new study reveals, and the study goes into it. As federal authorities investigate hanging deaths of two black men this month, a new report found nearly 2,000 lynchings of black people by white mobs in America that haven't been previously detailed. That haven't been previously detailed. And this was in 2020. They said it was looking at, in one month, two black people was lynched in one month. So black people was getting lynched back in 2020. That's only four years ago. So you can't say that's the past. It's more than that. Wait. In 2015, EJR reported more than 4,400 documented lynches of black people between 1877 and 1950, an average of 60 lynches each year. During the restructuring, there were more than 160 lynches each year on average, a total of 2,000 from 1965. Mighty history. We want y'all to open up this Bible and understand where we come from. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 18 and verse 1. 2 Chronicles 18 and verse 1. We want to show y'all y'all glorious history, man. Bring it up. And it reads, Now Jehoshaphat had riches. Now what? Now Jehoshaphat had riches. Jehoshaphat, one of our kings, had riches. He was a king of Judah. You so-called black men. Are you had kings? We reading from the book of uh, uh, well, this Chronicles, but you can read about him a king, right? Bring it up. It says and honor and what and honor that yeah, riches and honor. A lot of our so-called black rich men that's in a more famous because you got you know businessmen whatever, but you got most of our black rich men they don't have honor, they don't have integrity. But he had riches and honor. He was a respected man. Bring it up. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. So you see that? So Jehoshaphat had riches and honor. And that's our forefather. 
we actually come from royalty. That's right. We wasn't always just Negroes in America with our pants hanging off our ankles, walking like penguins. That never was all. That that never was how we always carried ourselves. We used to carry ourselves uprightly as royalty. When Solomon walked in the room, everything stopped because he was just that mighty. This Second Kings chapter ten. Second Kings chapter ten. Let's go read about King Solomon. You can start at verse verse number one. Or no, Second Kings nine and one. Or is it first? Yes, Second. No, it's, where you at? No, First Kings nine and one. Slot. Chuck, bring it up. It's the book of First Kings, chapter ten and verse one. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, heard of the fame of Solomon. So Solomon's name was going out through the four corners of the earth. All of the known world at that time, they was hearing about Solomon. Like, damn, you heard about that mighty king, that old gold, that all gold palace, the son of King David, who was enslaving the Edomites, enslaving the Syrians, the sons of Aram. Y'all heard about that man? Read. Concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him. She came to prove him. She wanted to see what he was about. I'm hearing all about this. That, 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 that new new guys, them Israelites. I heard about them. They got free out of Egypt. Heard about those slaves. I gotta see what's up with them. Bring it up. She came to prove him with hard questions. I got hard questions. And that's what they do now. They come up to prove the prophets. I'm gonna come up and scoff. I'm gonna ask them about John 3.16. This will get them. That's what they that's what they say about us. Right, bring it up. Verse 2. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones and when she was come to solomon she communed with him of all that was in her heart she came to him in royalty camels with spices a long train this wasn't some random woman this was the queen so she was mighty bring it out and solomon told her all her questions there was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. So he knew everything. Every question she had, she throwing these hard questions at him, he answering every one. Like it's nothing. He just bringing it out through the spirit of the Lord. Right? And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, in the meat of his table, in the sitting of his servants, in the attendance of his ministers, in their apparel, in his cupbearers, in his ascent, by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. She said there was no more spirit in her. She seen the cupbearers, the priests. She seen all the might. And she said, dang, these men is on another level. That's what she said. That's literally what she said. It was no spirit left in her. That's how mighty it was being in the presence of a man like King Solomon. Who in the Bible is described as a dark-skinned man, an Israelite man, royalty. That's where we come from. That's the history. What's going on, sisters? Can we get y'all a pen on the Bible verse real quick? Y'all a pen on the Bible verse real quick? Yeah, Acts 13 and 1. Well, y'all walking away, y'all walking away. Real quick, real quick, Acts 13 and 1. Check this out. This for you too, Dave. Right, check this out. This is for you too, brother. Right, check this verse out. We're trying to get y'all a pen on it. Look at Acts 13, verse 1. Right. Now they're working the church. That was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon. All right, this is Barnabas and Simeon. These are Jews, right? During the, the Roman captivity. Check this out. That was called nigger. That was what? That was called nigger. How y'all feel about that verse? You had Jews in the Bible getting called nigger 2,000 years ago. What y'all think about that? What y'all think about that? I'm sorry, you said what? This is the this is the book of Acts. This is after Christ. So after Christ, you had men out doing the work of the Lord. Okay, let, let's break it down. You got it, brother? Yeah, we about to break it down for y'all. Check this out. We about to show you the meaning of, the, of that word nigger. Check this out. We, we got the, the we got the, the Greek right here. Wait, hold on one sec. He, he got it. He, no, 
Oh, you got it? So this, this is a Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Nigger. Black. What it mean? Black. What does it mean black? So you had a Jew named Simeon. One of his surnames was nigger, meaning black. So that's what I'm saying. Like, what would y'all opinion be on that? Why is a Jew? Real quick. Real quick. Why is a Jew? Real quick. Why is a Jew? Why is a Jew getting called black in the scriptures? Because that's what he is, right? So in today's time, what would his race be considered? Black African American. But back then, what was it considered? Jew. So take us back in time, right? What would our nationality be? Jew. No. But we're the original Jews, okay? So with that word original, when did that change? How did it go from us not being Jews, but we used to be? Because you can't used to be a Jew. That's who we are by bloodline. How did it happen? It happened through through history, through the the sport. We gonna sh show y'all the word. I believe. I know y'all believe in Christ, right? We gonna show y'all some words of Christ. Get Luke seventy one and verse number twenty. As a matter of fact, get Revelation two and nine. We, we gonna show you some words of Christ and out of Revelation. Check this out. Revelation chapter two verse nine. This is red letter. Bring it up. I know that works and tribulation and poverty. He's talking to the, a church other Jews. He said, I know your work, your tribulation, your poverty. Talking to the Jews. Can you read it? But thou art rich. He said, but you rich. Because they rich in faith, spirit. They got the promises. Read. I know the blasphemy. I know the lie against God. Of them which say they are Jews. They say they are Jews. And are not. And are, and are not. And are not the Jews, but are what? But are the synagogue of Satan. They're the synagogue of Satan. The chief house of the devil himself. So those Jews claiming to be Jews. That's why they say Jewish. If I say you're acting childish. You're not really a child, you're acting like one. So they're acting like Jew, they're not actually the Jews. So what actually happened, when you read the history in Luke, the 21st chapter, 670 AD, the Jews got kicked out of Jerusalem. Let's get it real quick, Luke 21 and verse 20. 20, uh, yeah, 21 and 20. Y'all, all right, sis, we got a flyer for y'all. We're gonna go get y'all a flyer, right? We the real Jews, we the Israelites. Y'all praise to the most son. All praise to the most high. Let us run, run them down and give them a flyer, Lord willing. Run them down and give them a flyer, Lord willing. You trying to figure out what color Christ is real quick? I get Revelation 1, verse 1. Let's show you real quick, bro. Let's show you real quick, big bro. Check this out. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Let's jump to verse 14. Check this out. And it reads, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Do this for me real quick. And that's woolly hair. And it said Christ got woolly hair. That same woolly texture hair, that's what you got, right? That's what Christ got. Can you read it? As white as snow. Yours is, you know, brown, black. His was white, though. Like, if you like if you was, if you age yourself by 40, 50 years, you might have the white woolly hair. Can you read it? It says his eyes were as a flame of fire, you and his feet like onto fine brass. Uh, he had sandals on. He didn't wear, you know, Nike ones and Jordans. He had sandals on in 2,000 years ago. And he can see his feet. He described them as brass. Brass is another word for bronze, like a penny. So he had brown colored feet, right? As if they burned in a furnace. So Christ was so dark, it looked like his skin was burnt in the furnace. That's how John described it. So according to the Bible, Christ would be a dark-skinned man with an afro. You ever heard that before? You heard that before? But we actually just read it out the Bible. So how'd that make you feel, brother? To understand that the Son of God, the most important man figure that walked the earth, actually was our forefather. He actually looked like us. How'd that make you feel? It just make you feel like, yeah, like, yeah I'm that guy. All right, I'll pray. Well, let me, let me show you something else God said. You said what? You say you already know it? Check this out. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I want y'all pin on this verse too. Real quick, what's your, what's your religious background, big bro? Um, yes. Christianity. You've been Christian your whole life? Yes. Okay, okay. I'm going to show you a verse that I guarantee the pastor never read to you. I guarantee it. Check this out. And I want your opinion on this. Check this out. It's Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. This is Lord talking to the Israelites. He said you're a holy people. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee 
to be a special people unto himself. You special unto me. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, God said, I got a chosen people that's above everybody else. Now, does that sound like favoritism? If I got a chosen people and I say they above everybody else, is that favoritism? It sounds like favoritism, don't it? So, why in the Christian church they promote togetherness? Where in the Bible was togetherness ever preached? You never thought about that before? I'm saying, in the Christianity, because this sounds like favoritism. I'm saying, in the Christianity church, they push everyone, they push togetherness. But when we actually go into the Bible, it says something completely different. It's di you mean they push togetherness? Like, like, you're talking about, like, as far as, like, the body being made up of, the Christian being Christ being the head of the body and everybody being made of that particular body? Like, I, I just got a, a straight blunt question for you. According to the Bible, who's going to receive salvation in the kingdom of heaven? Those who committed their life to God. So, is that something you feel personally, or you disagree with the text? I'm with the text. That's what it says in the text. Okay, can you show us the verse real quick before I go into my verse? Okay. Nice. Yeah, we just we just waiting on the brother. I want to see the verse he, he wants to pull out. And we can read it too. A verse that says everyone will receive. Oh, Romans. Okay, so let, let's start at the top of the verse. Let's start at the top of the chapter. Let's start at Romans 10 and 1. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So according to the context of this chapter, he's talking about Israel. So when you go into verse 9, it says Jew and Greek, right? That's what you're talking about? It said there's no difference between Jew and Greek. Verse 12, that's he wanted 9 through 12. Verse 12, right? So we have to make this make sense. So I got one question. In the book of Romans, there are Paul's letters. What kingdom was in rulership? Yeah, who did they have to pay taxes to? Tiberius, Nero, Caesar Augustus. Like who who were who what nation were was they under? They they weren't under the Greeks. They were actually under the Romans. Because the Romans actually conquered the Greeks in 146 of uh, in yeah, 146 BC in the Battle of Corinth. And then in 80 or 65 BC, that, that's when they made Israel a vassal state under the Romans. That's why Christ said you gotta pay your tithes to, or not tithes, but you gotta pay Caesar his taxes. Caesar is the, the emperor over Rome. So I say that to say, why does it say Greek? It says Jew and Greek. Why don't it say Jew and Roman if the Greek if the Romans were in power? Like what you think? Not sure? But that's that's the thing. Greek is a way of life. It's not a nationality. Greek is something that people become by moving like Greeks. That's how they that's how they are. It's called Hellenization. We can show you another example of somebody in another nation getting called a Greek. Get that in Mark 7. I believe it's 21. Classic. Yeah. Check this out. We're gonna show you a lady that was a Canaanite, but she was considered a Greek. Because essentially what we're saying, just to jump the gun, those Greeks are Israelites that's conform to the Greek culture. You see what I'm saying? Those are Israelites who are Hellenized into the Greek culture. 
not actual Greeks. That's why I say it's Greek instead of Je or instead of Roman, because they're assimilated to that culture. Bring this up. The book of Mark, chapter seven, and verse twenty-six. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. So her nation was a Phoenician, but she was a Greek, meaning she was Hellenized. She followed the Greek customs. She worshipped Zeus. She sacrificed to Aphrodite. She followed the, the holidays like Janus and Salinalia. So that's when you read in Romans, it's talking about those Israelites as Greeks. Now let's check this out. Get Romans chapter, get Romans chapter 9. Or not now, chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and verse 1. Because it's the same letter. Let, let's see the audience that Paul is talking to. Check this out. Romans chapter 4 verse 1. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father. That what? Abraham our father. Who consider Abraham to be their father in the Bible? If you're familiar with that. Like who always said Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. That's our father. Who boasted in that? The Israelites. So why in the book written to the Romans, he said, Abraham, our father. Why do you think he said that? If I write a letter addressed to you and we and we cousins or something like that, and we got the same grandma, and I says, as such and such, our grandma. It's a letter written to the Israelites in Rome. That's what the letter is. Because those Israelites was Hellenized. That's what the that's what it's talking about. That's why at the beginning of the chapter, he said, Brother, in my hopes, desire, and prayers that Israel, that they might be saved. That's why we have to read the entire letter. Because when we start at the eighth chapter, it's talking about the remnant getting saved. And then he goes into how the Lord chose the uh, Esau, I mean Jacob out of Esau. And then he goes into the tenth chapter. And so I hope y'all all can be saved, because there's no difference between us and the Hellenized Jews. We the same people. That's literally what he's actually talking about. And we can prove that further. Get Romans chapter 9 and verse 26. Check this out. Bring it up. This is chapter 4. Bring this up. It reads, And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not... All right, 25. Verse 25. As he saith also in O.C. He said, as he said also in Hosea. This is Romans 9 and 25. Read. I will call them my people which were not my people. So he said that in Hosea. I'm going to call them my people, which were not my people. Talking about the Jews and Gentiles. Read. And her beloved, which was not beloved. So where do you read this in Hosea? This is a prophecy in Hosea. Can you read it? Verse 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where we sit unto them, ye are not my people. There shall they be called the children of the living God. So he's talking about the Jews and Gentiles. And he says, just like it says in Hosea, those people who are not my people, I'm going to call them my people in the land of the living. Talking about the Gentiles, though. So when you read Hosea, who is the audience in Hosea that he's quoting from? I started thinking about something else. I was thinking about I No, no, no. So again, this is this is the thing. The Lord cast away the ten the, the uh, tribes of his people, the northern kingdom of his people. Through Paul, he's writing these letters, and through Christ's death, that's how they get brought back together into the fold because they weren't his people anymore because he cast them off. But he's going to bring them back. To them, is other Israelites. It's all about Israel. That's why at the beginning of the chapter, he said, my hope's prayer is that Israel should be saved because it's all talking about Israel. So it's the same favoritism because the, the new covenant is between the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the northern and southern kingdom. That's why it's important we understand the Old Testament, the prophecies, and know the history behind Israel. The promises still stand. You got a point? So you know how we identify as American? If you go to Africa, you would be American, but they would call you whatever country you're in over there. You wouldn't identify as American. So it's the same kind of thing. They're in Rome, so they're going to be viewed as Romans or Gentiles. But at the end of the day, they still come from Israel. So they're Israelites, just with a different title. So that's why we read it. I'm saying those 
Jew and Greek, that word Greek is going to the Hellenized Jews. It's kind of like this. Right now, we got our fringes on, we reading the Bible, we trying to have a discussion. But you're, and we would consider you an Americanized brother. And we'll be brothers in the truth. There's no difference between us because Christ makes us one. We the same people. That's what Paul is teaching. All because I was raised a Jew, raised in the law. That's cool that you was raised Greek, but we still are one in Christ. So it's the same thing. So what I was reading was Romans 9, where he was saying, you know, he's going to say the Jews and the Gentiles. But he quoted Hosea. And that's what we're going to read right now. Hosea 1 and 10. To quote that. Bring this up. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel. So he was quoting this. The number of the children of Israel. Shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. That's the same exact thing it said in Romans. Speaking about the Gentiles though. Because those Gentiles are Israelites who was cast away. When you read Hosea, the first chapter. Israel got cast away by the Lord. Like he read. Verse 11. Because this is the point to bring it all together. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. So Israel is going to get brought together when Christ comes back as a nation in tow because right now we scattered abroad but that's what i'm showing you that's why i asked you instead of wrong why does it say greek because the that greek was just the hellenized jews is going into you being hellenized into the greek customs but paul is saying there's no difference between us we the same people so when i say i originally posed a question what verse says togetherness and we all gonna be saved that verse that you brought out actually doesn't answer that question still because through the precepts and through the history we understand those are just Hellenized Jews so it's still talking about Deuteronomy 7 and 6 these are the people uh, my favorite people because even in Romans the 11th chapter the first verse he said that God, God cast away his people God forbid I'm an Israelite that's what Paul said this whole chapter is directed towards the Israelites like the kingdom of heaven that's why I said, what verse can you show about the kingdom of heaven and the other nations making it? I'm going to ask you, how many gates are in the kingdom of heaven? Three or nine, let me show you real quick. Revelation 21, verse 12. Check this out. Revelation 21 and 12. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. So it got 12 gates in the kingdom. Now real quick, how many tribes of Israel are there? Twelve. Isn't it ironic? Why is it twelve gates and twelve children of Israel? Check this out. It says, At the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So you got twelve gates, and on the names of each gate is the children of Israel. So what's, why in the kingdom of heaven you got twelve gates, and on each door is only the twelve tribes? Where's the other nations go walk in at? That's what we are. It's something to think about. It's just something to think about. When you read this Bible, you actually go into it, you'll start to realize it's painting a certain picture. That's not the picture that they that they taught us. Because even this picture right here, that's the image they taught us. But is that the true image of Christ? Nah. But they push that in church. They push that throughout Christianity. So when you say you're a Christian, like, are you diehard Christian, or are you just kind of saying that because you was raised that, brother? Nah, like, okay, so I grew up, the way I grew up, was more so, like, uh, uh, diehard. Church, when I go to the like, I'm moving, I'm just and whatnot. But we, like, it's not, like, the same type of way I was raised. Like, I grew up, and it makes sense, like, like, my brother, for example, he's an Israelite. So, we, like, we have, like, these conversations all the time. Like, like, well, I bet you, they don't teach you this, but they don't do this in church. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like, we do, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just saying thing, or like, this is like the same thing taught besides, like, the fringes of the and things like that. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's like the same kind of belief, if that makes sense. But, I mean, it's certain things that, like, you know, I would say, or do that were on the extreme side, I would say. Okay. But, yeah, I don't know. That makes sense. Like, that's 
Like what? What's um? Uh, give me an example of something that's extreme. Extreme. Um. So. Uh, oh, you been waiting for this moment, hey, Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. What's his strength? Okay, we we in the moment, okay, now. Like, okay, so like white people, right? They just they just vanish. Like no matter how hard you know, or how much they like, oh, I'm here, door, like you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm be on my knees every day, and it's just like, no, nah, you're not a part of this. You're not a part of the tribe. Like you just cook. Like you're done. <laughs> Well, can I ask you a question? Why you name the white man first? Why you name the white man first? Yeah. Well, I mean, I what about a pin in my mind was that I have a roommate and he's actually Caucasian, you know what I'm saying? So okay. we go to the same we go to the same church, so it's like okay. you know what I'm saying? And I see how he's he's trying to align himself with, you know, with the Bible, with the text and things like okay. that. Okay. You know so I gotta bring it back to what we just read. Okay. How many gates is in the kingdom of heaven? Well, and whose names are on them? So who are, is the kingdom of heaven for? I would say everybody, but what you're asking me. I'm saying based on the, just the text. Yeah, just based, based on, on the verse. Text. Based on that verse. It, it says it's 12 gates. And, this, and mind you, this is Revelation. The second to last chapter of the entire Bible, it says the kingdom of heaven is 12 gates. So... How do you say it's for everybody when the Bible disagrees? You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing with what we teach. There's no emotion involved. We don't deal with emotions when it comes to the scriptures. We just deal with the black and white. Black and white is 12 gates. That's it. We can't make it a th we can't make a 13th gate if we wanted to. And you got brothers with white moms. And the brother got a white mom. Zeke, brother got a white mom. Can your mind make it to the kingdom of heaven? You can't do nothing about it. It is what it is. We didn't make this book. God wrote it for us. It's nothing we can do, brother. So your white roommate, he, he might be a good, you know, servant in the kingdom. That's cool, but he won't get to the gates, but by a certain way. Did you, did you, you said your brother is an Israelite, right? Did he explain the, the hierarchy of the kingdom? Okay, get Isaiah 14 and 1. I'm about to be passing it to the next speaker. All right, but get Isaiah 14 and 1. Bring it up. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So he said, I will have mercy on Jacob, who we understand is Israel. Can you read it? And will yet choose Israel. Now, this prophecy did not happen yet. This is a future prophecy. Check it out. And set them in their own land. Set them in their own land. Because the Israelites aren't in their own land right now. According to Isaiah 2 and 2, when the real Jews are in their land, there'll be no war in the earth. Right now, it's war over there in the Middle East. So we know the real Jews not in the land. So we go get set back in our original land. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Other nations go be with us in the kingdom. So you got 12 gates with our names on them. But the nations, they're going to be joined with us, though. But it's a hierarchy. It's a certain position they'll be in. Bring it up. Because ain't we in we in this kingdom right now? Well, are you on the same level as the white man in this kingdom? Or do they get certain benefits, certain head starts? You'll get fired before he does. It's the same thing. We in the kingdom, though. It's the same thing. It's going to be a role reversal. Can you read it? And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Cleave on to Jacob, read. Right? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Take them. Bring them to our place, read. Right? And the house of Israel shall possess them. Shall what? Shall possess them. What does it mean to possess something? Take over. Like own it. If I possess this car, it's mine. So how do you feel about the Lord saying the Israelites are going to possess the nations? <laughs> hey, all friends, we're going to keep reading. It's, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So they're going to be servants and handmaids under the Israelites. Can you read it? And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So the Lord said the Israelites are going to rule over their oppressors and take them captives in the land of the Lord. So how you feel about that verse, brother? I feel like, like, I, like I said, I heard that. You know what I'm saying? I think um, my brother did actually talk about that. Okay. I'll pray. Yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, do you agree with the text or like how you feel about it? Like, is it is, is, is what it like, is? Okay, or like? The thing is, like, I can't even say, do I agree with the text? I agree with the, you know, the whole Bible, right? Okay. At the end of the day, man, as far as like, um, just reading it through, you know what I'm saying? Really just 
on the cost on it myself, you know, really just okay. being able to understand it fully and then study it out. Right. Not just being like, because it's one thing to be like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Here's a verse here. Here's a verse here. You know what I'm saying? Here. Like, right. Play. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, oh, no. Like, what about this? There's still more questions and still more research. I want to be able to. Oh, of course, of course. That, that's Acts 17 and 11. We'll never t tell you, like, hey, hold on, you know. Just believe everything I say. No, the Lord said you got to search the scriptures daily. But I do want to make a point. This is Isaiah 14 and 1. So that's the full context. You know what I mean? What we just read is from the first top. Just, I just want to make that point. But nonetheless, that's a future prophecy talking about when the Lord redeems Israel. But again, you can look into it yourself. But I'm saying there's so many verses we can pull just like this, speaking prophetically about the Israelites in the kingdom. The 12 gates. The nations going to slavery under Israel. It's different. Like Daniel. In the book of Daniel, it says they go possess the kingdom forever and ever. That's Daniel 7 and 18. Even Abraham was promised to possess the gate of his enemies. So we can pull precept upon precept. Bring it up. This is a book of, <laughs> this is a book of Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 9. Then I'm going to go to 14. And the, yeah, verse 9. Thus said the Lord God, no stranger uncircumcised in the heart, nor uncircumcised flesh, shall so enter into my sanctuary. For any stranger that is among the children of Israel, right, and I'm going to go to 14, but I will make them keepers of charge, talking about the sons of, of Sadat, the Levites, of the house, for all the service thereof, and for all that shall be done therein. Wait, where, where I want to go? Uh, what is that? First, I'm gonna go to first uh, 16. They shall enter in my sanctuary, and they shall come near to me, my table, to minister unto me, and they shall keep charge. No, no, that's not what I want. Ain't what you wanted. You got a preset. Bring it up. This is Genesis 24 and 60. Are, hey, can, what's your name? Kyle. All right, my, this the I don't want to kibosh my nation more. All right, brother Kyle. So it says, and they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother, mother of thousands of millions and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them see that so the seed is going to possess the gates of those and that prophecy didn't happen yet the prophecy of the israelites possessing the gate of those that hate them didn't happen yet but it's going to happen like right, bring out your point preset yeah, here's my point jump into 12 because they minister unto them before their idols and cause the house of Israel to fall into iniquity, therefore I have lifted up my hand against them, said the Lord God. They shall bear their iniquity, and they shall not come near unto me and do the office of the priest unto me. So they can't even come near to the Lord in the kingdom of heaven. So they can't even come near unto the Lord in the, in the kingdom of heaven. But nonetheless, I mean, we can keep pulling out these various precepts through the Spirit. But again, it's something you'll have to check out for yourself through the Spirit. So, you know, Lord willing, your, your brother's got a flyer for the brother. All right, Kadar, you can get in there. Right? Kadar. All right, I'll pray some more. I have a question for you. So with, with those scriptures, does it, does it seem like feasible how we draw that conclusion of what we say? Like, can you at least kind of see why we have that position? Yeah, he, he said he, he said he just got to, you know, dive into it, obviously. Which, Lord willing, you do that. Lord willing, you do that. I'll pray some more stuff. With that, I'm going to give a Kwame Yashala. Kwame Yashala. Kwame Yashala. Let the next mighty, dynamic, powerful, electrifying speaker step on the scene, man.